There is so much to do in a Shrouded, it's difficult to keep track of what's next. What's your next goal or quest in the game? I did a lot of farming, especially legendary farming. Today though, it's time to start farming for real. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. My name is Foriam and in today's a Shrouded Guide, I'm going to share everything you need to know about actual farming, which is still pretty legendary in my opinion, as you can get your hands on a ton of resources without doubt the most efficient ways to do so. In today's guide, I'm going to share exactly what you need to do to get ready for farming, produce seedlings to start planting, get your hands on an infinite amount of sugar, honey, water, and so much more. So what are we waiting for? Let's get right to it. Today's sponsor, ladies and gentlemen, is my own freshly made vegetable soup, which I very much recommend you. Add a little bit of spiciness. Mm. Oh, that's good. No, but seriously, I partnered with G Portal. So if you want to have a sweet discount for servers, Valheim and Shrouded, whatever type of server, I can very much recommend their services and get a sweet discount during checkout if you use my personal ref link in the description down below. Cheers. All right, so let's begin with the two most important things for our farm prepare the farmland and also get our seeds ready so we can start multiplying the veggies which you want to get our hands on for future crafts. For this you first want to unlock the farmer for which I already have a guide which you can find at the top right of the screen but here in the bottom of the menu you can find resources and production place. Most importantly the farm bed right here for which you're going to need farm soil which can be made with both dirt and bone meal. Dirt is extremely simple to get your hands on. All you need to do is mine the floor basically to get dirt. As you can see, every time when we do this, we get a lot of this resource also depending a little bit on your talents or skill points. But I very much recommend you to not do this in your own buildable area. Stay out of your orange line because otherwise you're going to end up with some pretty nasty holes in your garden, which yeah, really doesn't look good. Anyways, we have almost 700 dirt right now. That is more than enough. Next up, we also need bone meal for which you want to pick up some bones from creatures and throw that into the grinder. Now we can revisit the farmer, make some of that sweet farm soil. So let's make a nice amount of this. Maybe a little bit too much, but now we can make a couple seed beds. I now have three in total, which will definitely speed up the process. So making more than one is very much recommended. Now, if you are still in the early game, you want to have the farm soil. Otherwise, you want to focus on the fertilized farm soil. These do the exact same thing. Both increase the growing speed of most plants, while this one right here does it slightly better, for which we also need fossilized bone dust and nitrate. So let's pick up some fossilized bone, which we've picked up earlier. Browse through the recipes, make the dust. So now if we visit the alchemy station and throw in all the resources, we can make some alchemical base. Check out your journal and first complete the quest to get your hands on the laboratory, as this is where you can craft nitrate with sand salt, wood acid and alchemical base. If you still need to get your hands on certain resources, by the way, be sure to check out my guide in the top right of the screen. An ultimate resource farming guide in which you will find pretty much all the resources in the game with dedicated timestamps so you can get your hands on them super fast. The next thing you want to do is find a nice flat surface where you can start the farm. Optionally, what you can do is take out a rake and flatten the surface. If you press and hold with the left button, you can flatten the terrain, make it the exact same height. But yeah, since we already have our farm soil, make this a lot easier, a lot more efficient by toggling your menu with the construction hammer. Go for the terrain and check out number six. So this right here gives us the farm soil block. Right now, we can basically fill in this area I originally started my farm with the regular farm soil as it's just super easy to get your hands on. But with just 15 fertilized farm soil, you can already come very far. And the nice thing is with your construction hammer, you can fix everything. Make the nature look beautiful once again. So you can see that all the damage done to the land can be fixed without a problem. And while we're at it, why not also slap down some sweet tart blocks to make all this look a little bit better. Make a couple fences with stone, protect our land from pesty creatures. No, but seriously, now we are ready to plant the seeds, which, yeah, we haven't gotten yet, as we've been busy bees, let's say, making our land look pretty. 
If you want to quickly get your hands on a ton of different plants, different vegetables to place in your garden, I very much recommend you to travel to the ancient spire Springlands and fly to the west, as right here you can find both the Harvest Homestead and Woodgard, a village with two small gardens including a bigger farmland filled with corn cobs, aurelian flowers, red mushrooms and especially those delicious tomatoes. Well, if you use the quick travel ancient spire nomad highlands and glide to the south, well, this is where you will find the bounty barn, very close to the ruined bridge and Lupa's lair. This place is swarming with saber cats and spiders, so pretty risky. Well, the reward is also big, as right here you can pick up a ton of bell peppers, sage leaves, and especially the straw, which is going to come in very handy for a craft talked about later in this video. I want to cultivate some tomatoes as with that you can make an amazing vegetable soup to increase your dexterity for 40 minutes. While we also need bell pepper and forest beet for that so let's focus on these three resources. Anyways now we're gonna take out those farm beds and I like to just place them right next to each other. So we're gonna do one, two and three so if we press craft right now we can throw in all sorts of plants all the plants which you can come across during your adventures pretty much can be found in this menu even trees can be found at the very bottom so you never ever have to go out there and search for the separate plants let's throw in some tomato seeds right here for water is going to be just fine now we're gonna make some seedlings let's do the same for the bell pepper which we talked about earlier and now last but not least we also have our forest beads for which we're gonna need the farm soil so let's throw that in as well so voila now we have all our seed beds producing seeds slowly which is gonna take some time but good thing is i already got my hands on some seedlings earlier for both the berry bushes and the flax so let's do the flax first as you actually need a lot of this to produce linen which later on converts into fabric which you need for all sorts of crafts so perfect I'd say for this farm. Let's place the seedlings in there. Take your time with this. You want to place the plants as close to each other as possible to fit as many seedlings as possible in your farmland as then of course your farm is going to produce more on a smaller surface so you don't have to make giant farmlands to meet the demand of all your crafting requirements. So voila, there we have it, a nice amount of flax. Let's quickly check out our inventory. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine by one, two, three, four, five. So that's 45 seedlings planted in this little surface. I think pretty efficient. Let's see if we already have some seedlings. Fortunately not. This takes a pretty long time while the beads right here are almost done. Look at that. So we can start plant these as well. I mean, you want to get these in your farm as quick as possible. With one of your endgame quests, a beehive smoker, you can also gain access to the smoker itself, which can also be crafted at the farmer right here. But this one unlocks the ability to craft a honey beehive. For this one, we're going to need a decent amount of straw and lumps of clay. Good thing is I already picked up a nice amount of this resource. Anyways, now we can make that sweet honey beehive and place it at the farm as well. And look at that. We can now harvest the flax already. So... That was pretty quick. Beehive, let's rotate it, place it right there. That's beautiful. Now we're gonna have to throw in some sugar and water. To produce all these seedlings, you're also gonna need a ton of water. So why not just break down your well and replace it to reset the water spawn as you can rinse and repeat this process to get your hands on all the water you will ever need. At a certain point, you will have more than enough though, but here we go, another 20 water to make some more tomatoes. Now for the sugar, you wanna get your hands on some sugar cane, which you can find all over the Nomad Highlands and also a little bit in the desert. So you wanna make your way to the east of the world, but then you wanna interact with Emily and focus on energy foods and voila, this is where you will find the sugar. So we can craft a nice amount of this to grant our bees the divine power of making honey at the beehive. You know what? Let's also quickly harvest the flax. Get our hands on a ton of this. Unfortunately, the only problem right here is that after you've harvested the resource, you're going to have to put some new seedlings in the ground. So now the only thing our plants need is a little bit of sunlight and time to fully grow into delicious snacks. 
It's 5 past 3 p.m. right now, and I already see the flax transforming into some beautiful harvestable flax. So I'd say the perfect moment to grab yourself a cup of coffee, or even better, your freshly made vegetable soup, which I did yesterday. So I'd say cheers. All right, so here we are, 10 past 3 p.m. Let's quickly check out the plants. So they are still not fully grown, while these also changed shape. And just now the forest beets also decided to evolve. Gotta catch all these grass Pokemon in a second, but let's do a little bit more waiting until they are all fully grown. I already see some flax ready to be harvested. Let's fast forward the time a little bit more and yeah, now you can see that everything has fully grown. So that means it kind of take about 10 minutes to get a fully grown flax plant, while for others it might take a little bit longer. And here we go, we just got our hands on 20 honey as well. Sweet. So now we can make a ton of linen with the flax we've produced earlier, but important, be sure to not use all of them because you also want to convert some of the flax back into the seedlings. Especially tomatoes, I think, are one of the more difficult plants to get your hands on. So I would say first multiply them as much as possible. And then, yeah, you can make a massive farm to get insane yields in return. But hey, now we can finally produce that delicious vegetable soup and continue our adventure in Eschwoudet. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Everything you need to know to farm like a bouse basically in Enshrouded. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. Already very much appreciated. And yes, a lot more Enshrouded is coming your way. So if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe as I have a lot more content prepared for the future. If you have more questions or video suggestions, you are very welcome to leave those in the comments down below. And of course, share your farm design on the Discord. I'd love to see what your base looks like. Anyways, right now it's 4am out. I would wish you an amazing day. I'll check you in the next video. Peace.